Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something just a little different. Um, I'm going to show you a video that we filmed and produced where I made a pineapple upside down cake. And it didn't turn out the way that I had planned for it to. I just followed a cake mix recipe, you know, the box to how it was instructed. That part was fine. However, I did not prepare the pan properly. I need to find out how you prepare a pan when you're adding fruit to the bottom of it. And, you know, I greased it and floured it like I normally do a cake pan. So I think that should have been done a little differently. So that was one mistake that I made. And then at the end of the video, when I was dumping it onto the cooling rack, I didn't, I should have put the rack on top of the cake and then dump it. I just did it all wrong. It could have been dangerous. I could have gotten myself burned. I didn't. But then also the finished product, thirdly, did not come out evenly and clean like I wanted it to. So, I just want to let you know that, you know, you're going to make mistakes. Things are not going to turn out the way that you plan. But rather than getting all depressed over your failure, don't count failures as a fatality. Count it as a learning plan, you know, a lesson, a stepping stone. Every great inventor had plenty of failures that that was one way they knew not to do it you know they just kept on building on that okay that doesn't work so don't do that again but you keep improving and learn how to do it correctly so failure is not fatal unless you don't get back up so that's the message i want to convey to you and i hope you will enjoy this video so stay tuned Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be making a cake, an ups, a pineapple upside down cake using a store-bought cake mix. So stay tuned. Okay, so I was looking through my pantry today for ingredients and I saw this can of sliced pineapple and I was thinking to myself a pineapple upside down cake would be mighty tasty today so I thought I've not made this before so let's give it a try and I had a yellow cake mix so hmm I think this will work now I've not baked a lot of cakes from scratch maybe a couple I usually doctor up a cake mix, and there's this uh, lovely uh, cookbook uh, called The cake mix, Doc cake mix Doctor, and she has some wonderful recipes in there. You, the base is a cake mix, and you just add ingredients, and no one would ever know it was from a cake mix. So for this recipe, I'm following mostly the directions on the back of the box with a little variation, and I'll tell you what that variation is in a moment. So you're gonna need a box of yellow cake mix. You're going to need a can of pineapple slices, slices, excuse me, or you can use crushed pineapple. I think that would be fine too, but it gives it a different appearance. So I'm using sliced canned pineapple, and you're gonna need three eggs, and you're going to need half a cup of vegetable oil. Now, it also calls for a cup of water. So my variation is I'm going to drain the pineapple juice from the can into my cup. And hopefully I'll get a cup out of that. If I don't, I'm going to complete it with water. So I hope it's mostly pineapple juice. I think that will give the cake a lovely taste. So first things first, we need to prepare our baking dish. I'm using a nine by 13 baking pan. You can use cooking spray or you can use the method I'm using since I do not have any cooking spray available. They do make cooking sprays 
four bakers that has flour in it, but it's going to the same thing that I'm doing here today. Sorry, I'm stumbling on my words tonight. So I don't use shortening for a lot. I use it to uh, coat my cake pans, my pan that I'm making cornbread in, and if I'm making biscuits. Today I'm coating my cake pan, and all you do is you just take a paper towel, get just a little on your paper towel, and I don't need that again, so I'm going to put it away, and then, if you can see this, you're just going to coat your pan. Rubbing it around with your paper towel. You can use your hands or your fingers if you want. But it's going to make them greasy and you'll want to wash them after you complete this step. Using the paper towel helps you avoid that next step if you're starting off with clean hands to begin with. Okay, so I've got that nice and coated. So now, if you're wondering what I needed the flour for, this is what I need it for. I'm just going to get about a spoonful. About like so. And put it in there. I can get the flour out of the way. And... You just tap your pan until you've got it distributed. This is how they did it back in the day. They didn't have cooking sprays. And you don't want big globs of flour. Yeah, I'm having to use my hands a little bit. But just get it as proportioned as you can. So it will quickly release. And if you have any excess flour, you want to dump it out in the garbage or your sink or what have you. I think we're pretty good here. All right, so I'm going to set that aside for the moment. And I'm going to crack my eggs in my bowl here. Careful not to get shells. We're not making a crunch cake. Oh, got a double yolk. You see that? So three eggs are in here. So now, just wiping my fingers off, I'm gonna beat these eggs before I put the other ingredients in. Okay, and I'm going to measure out my, put these eggshells away, my pineapple juice into my cup. This has a flip top opener, so I'm just going to barely pull it back, about like that. It was almost a cup. If you let it settle down a minute, turn it back, and we get a little more juice out. I just think this is going to add a lot of flavor to the cake. So I didn't quite have a cup. I had about three fourths of a cup. So I have a little water on standby. just to make a full cup of liquid. Okay, so it was probably about three fourths cup of pineapple juice from the drained pineapple, and then I filled it up the rest of the way to make a cup of liquid. I'm gonna pour that into my eggs. And then, put my measuring cup aside too quickly. I need half a cup of vegetable oil. Okay, I'm going to put that into the eggs and the juice. Put that aside. 
side. And now I'm going to add my cake mix. Okay, and then just dump that in the bowl. So really, it's pretty much following the instructions on your cake box, except I'm using the juice instead of water. You can also use um, milk in most cake mixes that make it a lot more richer, or you can use melted butter that makes it very rich. So now that we got all of our ingredients for our cake in the bowl, we're just going to mix it all up. Start off on slow until all the powder on the cake mix is covered. Now I'll turn it up to medium and just feed it for about two minutes or so. Just make sure it's well blended and there's no lumps in it. That's good. See the rich yellow color? I think the pineapple juice kind of assisted in that. Okay, so we're not ready to put the cake in the pan yet. We have to put our pineapple in first because the pineapples bake on the bottom and if you dump it out of the pan, the pineapples end up on top. So I'm just gonna take a fork And just layer the pineapples. You could put some cherries in here too if you like. See if I have enough to put three per row here. I had to spread it out just a little. And I had a little more juice in the bottom. Oh, and I have an extra pineapple. I'll let my husband eat that one. But I'm going to pour the juice in here. It's not that much more. Set that aside. Now I just poured some more liquid in here. So I'm going to mix it up a little more. So now we're ready to pour the batter on top of our pineapple. And like I said, if you want to put a cherry in the center of each one, that's fine too. Okay, so we're just going to spread it over the pineapple in our pan and try to evenly distribute as much as we can. I'm scraping it up with a little spatula here. Sorry, I'm facing it away from you. Turn it around here. And I'm just going to bake it according to the instructions on the box. I just want to make sure all the pineapple are covered. Okay, so for a 9 by 13 pan, it says to bake 24 to 30 minutes in a 350 oven. I already have my oven preheated to 350, so I'm going to put it in there, and then we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Okay, so we've had our cake in the oven for 30 minutes on 350. It's nice and golden brown. It did kind of cave in in the middle. It just happens. And so I want to dump it out on this cooling rack. I'm a little nervous. It's been out a few minutes to cool. So I'm not making any promises. You're witnessing this yourselves. So I'm just gonna loosen the side and that pretty, you know, it's not sticking. 
There's a little hope there. Okay. So, let's see. I'm gonna put my rack over here. And let's see what happens. Ta-da! Well, it kind of stuck. But you know what? It's going to be delicious. So I'm going to let it cool. I'm going to put it in something so we can enjoy this after our lunch tomorrow, after we get home from church. Uh, no, it's not perfect. This is the first time I've ever made a pineapple upside down cake. And I'm here to tell you that everything you make is not going to turn out perfect. Don't be discouraged. I'm not discouraged. I think it's going to be delicious. It smells wonderful. I can't wait to have a slice. Yeah, it's not pretty, but you know, like I said, don't get discouraged. Maybe the next time I make this, it'll turn out better. If you have a tip on this, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So my thing is just try things. It doesn't matter. They may or may not turn out. I'm sure it's delicious. It's very hot right now. So maybe I should have let it cool off a little longer. I don't know. If you have any ideas on that, I'd love to hear from you. So just keep trying. Try new things. I make new things all the time. They do not turn out 100% like I expect it to. This did not, but it smells divine, and I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. So just hang in there. And take a lesson from me. It doesn't matter if it's perfect. Okay? So just have fun. Be creative. And I hope to see you in the next one.